This is some craziness. It's starting to get out of hand. All these Toyotas. Let's take a look at some of the things on these forerunners, the third gen forerunners, uh, to look for if you are shopping for one of them, kind of like the Tacomas. Let's check this out. So here's that 2002 Limited, and this is uh, been in the salt belt. So let's take a look up underneath, check that out, and compare it to uh, the uh, California model out there with no rust. All right, so I've taken the spare out and we can see some rust where all of that road debris is. One thing you definitely want to check out. Now, this one isn't as bad as a lot of them that I've seen. I've seen where it's actually eaten away a lot of the frame. We can still salvage this with the wire wheel and some treatment. So this one's not totally gone yet. These can be your friend, especially fluid film for rust protection. And this is the biggest problem area right in here. Uh, this, these are where the weld kits are available. You have the gas tank skid plate showing a little bit of rust. It's not as bad as I've seen, but you definitely wanna take a look underneath these before you buy them and see what type of shape they're in. Now this is a box frame transfer case. That's a plastic skid plate for that. Overall, this 2002 isn't too bad at all for the miles. It's actually very clean, paint's good, interior's super clean. So now let's compare the 2000. That's been California, Florida. We can definitely see the difference. Hardly anywhere at all. I've sprayed the bell cranks with fluid film simply for extra protection. This is a two wheel drive. A lot of fun to drive, good mileage, handles better, a little less weight. Let's take a quick look behind where the spare is. Big difference. And this is the shape that you want to find them in. But resale are just for your personal use. All right, well, there you have it. There's a little bit of comparison between a Rust Belt Toyota 4Runner and one that's been free and clear. Check the link below for my Tacoma buyer's guide. Many of these things are very similar because it's the same, very similar platform that we're talking about here. One thing I did forget to mention are the lower ball joints. And look at your lower ball joints. What you want to do there is jack up the front of the vehicle if, if you're able and see if there's any movement. There should not be any. You definitely want to check those out on both the Tacomas and the third gen 4Runners. And also the your axle seals. I've sprayed fluid film up in here just for these bell cranks, just for them to keep operational. And another thing that is a problem with these is the e-brake. Uh, sometimes those, this uh, pivot point here freezes up and also these get rusty and they fail to work. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Taking a look in the engine bay, your valve cover gaskets are known to leak. Is there oil dripping out? One thing that can happen is the oil can drain onto the alternator and take that out. Check your belts. Then up underneath, make sure you want to look for any oil leaks that are obvious. Take a look at your rack and pinion, your steering, to see whether or not that is leaking because those can be costly when you go to replace them. So engine wise, some of the things to look for, intake tubes can be cracked. This one has one that's starting, so I'm probably gonna just put some tape on that for right now. And of course your valve cover gaskets, these 
as mentioned before, are leaking oil. So that is upcoming. Timing belt, of course. Usually there'll be a sticker there. If it's uh, done by a private shop, it might be missing. So what you can do is look at it in Carfax and call them to see if it has been done. All right, so we're just gonna do a quick inspection or take a look here, uh, just a peek at the timing belt on this because I don't know if it's been done. And I'm seeing cracks. That may indicate that it needs to be changed. You can kind of see some of those cracks on there. I don't like the looks of it. I'm trying to get down there to see if there's anything around the water pump. You also want to look at your radiator because those are a problem spot in these Forerunners and Tacomas. If it's an olive color like this, most likely it is an original radiator. Uh, if it's black, if the plastic seems to be new, then most likely it has been replaced. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And with the 204,000 miles on this, I'm probably going to do that as part of the maintenance rather than risk that pink milkshake, which happens on occasion where your radiator fluid, your antifreeze and your transmission fluid end up mixing, getting into your transmission and ruining the transmission. So definitely worth 200 bucks to get a new one and swap it. You wanna look at your antifreeze, check your transmission fluid, see what color it is. Oil filter is down there and it can be kind of a pain to change the oil in these 3.4 V6s because you actually have to drop the skid plate and then go through the side peeling back. Peel back that little guard right there. Moving to the interior, check your door checks to see whether or not your doors stay open. Those can be costly to replace. And all these forerunners, pretty much the seats are absolutely trash from getting in and out. The leather is of low quality. Apparently cracked all over the place, worn. And then we move to the back and we have a mom alert. Yep. Look at that weather stripping, getting kids in and out, car seats, all that kind of thing takes its toll no rust there on the rear panel then it's pretty dirty those floor mats are going directly into the trash it's an indication probably wasn't taken care of all that great seats are kind of worn back here and then we take a peek over and it's not that bad so we took these rear panels off for painting here's another thing to check your gear selector sometimes the bushings down in there are worn so you have a little bit of a play it may not matter to you but that's a few hours of tearing this apart and replacing the bushings which uh, might be up to twenty dollars take it easy champ almost all of these older center caps the paint is missing i ordered new ones for it you can just take those off as well and paint them if you'd like but i'm just gonna go the route of getting some new ones from this Yep, no automatic controls, you just got the old knobs. But it never works. They're all broken. So if you're gonna buy a 400, just pin on this. This whole unit being broken, take it out, send it so they can solder the contact points or something like that. Headlights are on, but it's not lit up. The bulbs are out, so when you're going down the road in the dark, it's hard to tell what your fan speed is and uh, all that kind of jazz. You play jazz flute? I dabble. Where your temp is yeah so that's not very convenient i'm going to take off the roof rack because i think it kind of looks dumb you can always just put it back on when you need it so one thing i like about these third gens is you just put your window down and the armrest is like right here you know some of these bigger vehicles you got to stretch out you know throws you back to yesteryear it's cool back in the day these this is a limited so it was like a luxurious vehicle almost now you can pick them up for like five grand or less somewhere in there you know 
It's just a nice size. That's what she said. <laughs> Fantastic. It's nice to be able to get out and mess around a little bit here with the with the fish. Nice crappies today. I know I haven't done much in the outdoor front, the fishing stuff. It's all been vehicles lately, but guys are 12 inches. I don't usually keep fish, but it's this is the real deal. Yeah.